Hi, is anybody out there yet? I'm a few minutes early, so I just wanted to check in and see how you're all doing. Hello everybody, uh, I'm here to share uh, one of my layouts for my design team project for Art Anthology and I'm super excited and nervous at the same time so um, I will just walk you through what I did and um, I will create this page. So I um, used blue blue fern stu studio chipboard pieces and I um, I painted those with um, gemstones and this is so yummy this texture is I love it it's super thick and it's fun to work with and the colors are vibrant and highly pigmented um, so let's get started. I'm going to um, ink some fringe here with the uh, minx. And the minx, this color is called en uh, Enchanting. And it's a dropper. You can put it in a spray bottle. It has some shimmer to it. So I don't know why I use paper plates, but for whatever reason, I can't figure out what else I can use for spraying stuff. And then right now I'm using um, the colorations and the color is called Salmon. I love this color combination. So I wanted to do this first because it takes a while to dry and I don't want to use my heating tool because it might fry it. <laughs> So I'll put that aside and then I will start with um, the background and this is what I do on almost all of my pages. I used these decorative scissors and uh, it helps with distressing. So I just randomly go along the sides and and then I'll use uh, Tim Holtz distressing tool. Okay. Hopefully everybody can see this okay. I don't see the chat, so I'm not sure how to get that on. I'll have to work on learning about Ustream so so I'm going to use acrylic gesso and um, I use the white and then I use a clear gesso it kind of gives it um, translucent um, spots on the page and I always probably put way too much but I guess a lot is better than not enough So I always try to get the whole page, um, otherwise it, the inks and sprays will bleed through. I'm 
Okay, it's gonna get a little noisy. Okay, so now I'm going to use uh, Art Anthology's mud for texture, and I always give it a good stir. And then I'm going to use one of the uh, six by eight stencils from Art Anthology, and this one is called Blossom. It's really, really pretty. On my um, original page, I used a different stencil, but I figured since I had the stencil, we got these in last week, so I wanted to, I figured this would be perfect because it has flowers on it. Shoot, I always do this. This one will turn out a little bit different, but the same concept. And then I did on this corner. And when I'm working with stencils, I always have a pan of water on the side because they, the stencils dry out with the mud or any kind of texture you're working with and it's really hard to, for me to get off. So I always put it in a pan of water just so it stays soft and it doesn't dry out. And then I have a little cup on the side for my paintbrushes so they don't dry out. Okay, next I'm going to use the salmon colorations, and I can't remember what, let me put it up here, so um, I'm not for sure, I can't remember which one I sprayed first, but I'll go with lighter first, and I just, sometimes I just play, I don't, really know how it's going to turn out, but <laughs> it scares me, but it always seems to turn out somehow. And then I dry in between the spraying. And then I'm going to use uh, the colorations, and this is French toast. This is really, really, I love this color. It's a brown, and it always looks scary.
Okay. And now I'm going to use the minx again, um, the enchanting, and I'm going to um, flicker some spots on the page. Oh gosh, where? And I don't have a fan paintbrush. I've seen people use them. Uh, Lynette has used them and I want one, but this is what I have today. So this stuff is highly pig pigmented. <laughs> Once you get it on your fingers, it is there for a little bit. So, so I just randomly um, flicker some just remembered I did drop some last on this page to bring out some of the pink and then I used water just to uh, move it around I just love playing with inks and stuff. I, I'm hoping someday I can um, do more painting and drawing, but I just don't have the time for that. Scrapbooking is fast for me and I get, get done and I just love doing um, paper crafting. But someday I would love to do some painting. This might be a little more than on the other page, but. to uh, flicker some of the uh, French toast. Ooh. I think I used a little paintbrush before. to do. I'm not sure if it'll be seen very much, but I did a little bit of the flickering of the salmon. Let me see this small brush. Okay. 
Okay. Set this aside and I'm going to paint the chipboard pieces. And I already did one. The texture is just awesome. You can um, go smoothly with it or um, just dab at it and give it more texture. And I say more texture is better for me anyway. I love lots of texture. And for this, I'm going to use the gemstones, and this called it. This is called uh, rhodolite. Such yummy, yummy texture. It's super thick. Where's my paint? And so I didn't even put gesso on it. I just painted it. And if you don't want to get your nails all messed up, you better put uh, some, what do you call it, rubber gloves on. But at this point, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> okay, so I'll put that aside. I don't know if you can see how yummy that texture is, but it is, I love it. I'll put that aside to dry, and then I'll work on the uh, matting. Oh, actually, gosh, I'm forgetting here. I also uh, painted the chipboard, I mean, the corrugated paper for the background. Before that, I used the gemstones, and it's called garnet. And this color is pretty close to the other one, but it ha it's more red. makeup sponge for this. See how red that is? I don't know if you can see that but compared to the other one. And it dries pretty fast, so that's what I love about it. Some paints, you they don't dry very fast, and you have to either use your heating tool or wait until it dries. So I'll set that aside and work on the matting. Okay, so what I usually do is, I don't even measure really, I just kind of eyeball it. And for a lot of them, I do use the decorative scissors just for more texture. And this makes a mess, so I do that one. And then I used this is Prima uh, Tales of You and Me, just some scrap pieces I had 
weekend. So those come in really handy. My desk looks like a mess. So when I'm doing layouts, I don't have a plan. I don't know what I'm doing. I sometimes will grab a piece of paper or grab um, a paint and I'll just start going to town. I, I don't really know how it's going to turn out. So I guess that's fun, but sometimes to me it's scary. <laughs> but that's how most of my layouts are created. I don't have a plan which is good and bad, I guess. So then I use the Tim Holtz Distressor. I just realized I forgot to put the glitter on the... Uh, on the chipboard pieces. Okay, so this should this is already dry. I didn't even use my heating tool on it. Okay, and my stapler. I'm just trying to see how this page back out. So what I put this aside, what I do on most of my layouts, I'll put another piece of paper behind it just to um, smooth it out. It helps to take away from the wrinkling. Dresser again. Another um, key I do uh, found out is when you're doing layouts to um, cut about a, I would say an eighth of an inch, maybe even less on two sides, so that way these pages actually can fit in the um, plastic protective sleeves in a scrapbook. And I've done some bulky, bulky pages. So it, do, it does work if you cut down the pages a little bit. use uh, Fabri-Tac. It is my favorite glue. It costs a lot, but I've tried so many glues out there and I always come back to using Fabri-Tac. It gets kind of messy and stringing towards the end, but I won't use any other glue. Sometimes I run it on the edge of my desk and it helps to straighten it out. 
flatten it out, I should say. Okay, so now time for the uh, creating the layout. Okay, this is pretty dry. Don't you just love that? This is my favorite fringe. I think I did it upside down. <laughs> stamp out and my stamps are very very messy drives kind of drives me crazy but I keep them inked because then you don't have to keep on um, trying to get every little spot and then I use the color box I've had this ink I would have to say probably 10 years <laughs> and it still works it doesn't look very pretty but so I um, stamped and this was I didn't even think about what it was saying I just wanted something on the page with um, a stamp and I'm sorry I don't I think this was a Tim Holtz I'm not sure I'm really bad about keeping names of things and I just if I like it I get it and I don't even look at the names so. <laughs> and then I stamped again down here Okay, and then I will get the chipboard pieces. I might put a little more paint on just so I can put some glitter on. This is, um, I'm not sure the name of it, but it's really pretty. And I just wanted some glitter, some bling. Okay, so these pieces are a little different. It came in a pack of four. So cut out some doilies with a die cut and this was from Prima and you can use a lot of scraps um, and do a lot of die cutting So stamped a bumblebee. I love this. I got it from Michael's in the dollar bin. I don't know why I just put one, maybe I'll put two here. Okay. 
Okay, and so getting ready to do the placement of the flowers. Before I forget, I have found a new fun thing to play with is some thread. Since I don't use my sewing machine anymore, I had all this thread, so I'm putting it to good use and I put it behind my flowers usually. Okay, so I have a bunch of flowers that coordinate with this, uh, the paints. Can't remember where I placed these. I love these cherry blossom flowers. So what I do is place them and then I dab glue on them. This glue can get so messy, but I won't use anything else. And I also have a couple other die cuts from Prima and then from um, Spellbinders. And this one was called um, Romantic Vines. Here's what the die looks like. It's really pretty. So I just Put them behind the flowers.
I just love these die cut leaves. some beads and micro beads that I used on some of the flowers and I couldn't find let's see so I had some right here on this flower but I couldn't find my white I used a or a clear white so I'm going to use pink and these are so yummy they're from Michael's And when I use, um, use beads on my layouts, I use uh, 3D gel for adhering them. I'm just going to mix the micro beads with the uh, seed beads. color pretty This part always seems really scary too because once it's dry it looks really good but it doesn't look like it's going to be very pretty. But the um, 3D gel, it dries clear so you'll be able to see the beads better. have one more thing to do and I think it's just oh it's I have some um, sequins I used and then some gem flatback gems so this is tricky because they're little and they're kind of annoying sometimes but I love using them So this is say it with crystals. And then here's my little pack of sequins and I think I used these. I just usually place them where I'm where I want them and then I glue them down. And here is the tricky part. So I use this little tool to apply a little bit of um, the gel medium.
And I think that is it. Okay, I'm going to show you what the first page looked like. I'm pretty darn close. So my printer is out of ink, otherwise I would have, um, you know, printed another picture. So I hope you guys enjoyed my first show. I'm sorry. I hope I did okay. And I hope you guys stay tuned for my next uh, video. Well, I have a layout ready, but um, just watch for my uh, events coming. And thank you so much. I hope you get to try out Art Anthologies products. They are amazing. I love the texture and I love the colors and they have stencils, they have tools. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in and happy crafting.